So let's go into this, right? It was like probably I think it was like January of last year, and that's when the the clip came out of Nori saying, uh, "I could never interview Cuban Link because of Fat Joe. Fat Joe is my friend, right?" And I remember nobody really caught on to that when, um, and I watched the the podcast. And the moment that I saw that clip, I said, "That's the star clip right there. I got to put that clip out because that." And I wasn't even thinking mm-hmm. about it in a sense, like on a deep level, like, see, this is proof for the blackballing of blah, blah, blah. But nobody wanted to mention Cuban Link, I really. Was. And I, that was the, the the big idea to me. I was like, wow, like nobody really wants to talk about him. Nori is finally talking about him. That's why I think, I think, the, I think, the, even though, he, you know, he did it by mistake. He, he, he didn't do it by mistake. He did it because it's a real situation behind the scenes. So, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure Joe probably, Got pissed the fact that he made me rele- relevant again on some level that you know they're talking about me, but they've been talking about me and drinking chess for a minute. You know they take the chat. They, 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 they started off with unity in the beginning. Uh, EFN always throws me, you know a little bit. Like I said, EFN was, was a friend of mine before he was uh you know anything like that with Nori uh, in Miami. He used to be my DJ. Uh, we rock some shows together. Uh, Humble Cat. Uh, but it's just you know, it's not it's, it's not enough for for us to have a good report for me to have a good report with somebody. They know my, they know who I am. They know, uh, you know what I mean, uh, what I stand for. Uh, you know how we kicked it. That's not enough. So uh, and I don't want nobody to lose anything crazy over me or stand up, take a bullet. No, nigga, I'm not that. I'm not gonna do that for you. That's why I, I saw a show I was. But at the same time, it would be good for a motherfucker to say some real shit, man. Make a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like stand up for for somebody that, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, she gave you love. She gave you love. Now, that's the problem with the shit. You know what I'm saying? You could do something for somebody, but then when life comes back around and shows them or gives them the opportunity to showcase they motherfucker, how they feel about you in a positive, good way. Love. In my case, motherfuckers. Oh, like fucking pretzels. No salt. Oh, man. Matter of fact, mad salt. <laughs> and mustard. That's what they feel like. But me, i tell you countless stories. I think I did. When I stood up, I just know, nah, that's my nigga. It's my nigga. Can't do that. Can't do that. Nah. I did it for Joe too. Some niggas in there, in that crew right there, that were my defectors that are over there, that I stopped them from doing anything with Joe. They know. But you think that they want me to bring things up like that now? It's just the how the fuck can you stand in that square and then represent your boy Cuban? And that nigga did it for you. That's what I have a personal problem with. And that's. A lesson I have to learn, you know, and so, also also know that this is a you know an entertainment game right here. It's very 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 fucking uh, ugly. It's ugly with that with 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 honor and loyalty and shit. You know, supposed to have for certain things because uh, that spotlight and, and that money is involved and and them snakes in there talking that hell of a fucking game. So you got to be on point. So that clip blew up everything because. Right when I put that clip out, I think it got like 60,000 views or something like <laughs> oh, some shit. crazy. Like, you're thinking about the cute uh, the clip still. I'm about my bad. I took it so No, 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 no <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, 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 but it really blew up. Uh, it started to gain a lot of traction on the channel and everything, right? And I yeah, remember yeah. I reached out to you and we were supposed to do a second interview. Uh, because you was gonna give me the exclusive on how you felt about that whole situation with Nori. And um, yeah. and so it blew. Uh, I remember like I, we couldn't get in touch or whatever. We did do we did do something though. That's what I'm we talking didn't about. do it the time that you said that we were gonna do it because you know how you are with scheduling and stuff. Okay. But then I remember I finally was able yeah. to contact you and you pulled over on the side of the road. You was like an hour away from home, and that started the interviews in the car. <laughs> and like, and you know, 
because we on real time. But that's what I'm saying. Grassroots. That's what we did. No, no, that was the interview that made people think Driving you were crazy. With no hands, no hands. Yeah, because of no hands. You was like in the dark with almost, the no like part of your face was like dark, and like you was like you was on that real like uh, talking about how you were mad at Nori before and what caused all these different things, and then the whole math off uh, aspect of it, right? And then that was the first time. Yeah, that got me mad because I hate, I hate, I hate a motherfucker that jumps in and you got no no invitation. Like, who told you to jump in? Like, but I know who told you. But I, I, I just want China. It's good to happen the way it happened because, like I said, I could go with the ruler, and, you know, <laughs> Maestro Cuban, fucking show you exactly who the fuck is the next corporate. But no, this is how they do the, the whole pyramid scheme. I break it down for you because you see it, you see how they rock, how they rock, and they groom people to be under them. And Joe was a fucking master groomer. You know what I'm saying? He groomed all the dogs around the neighborhood. But what was what's so crazy about that interview, though, was you dropped the bomb and you said, you said, Joe actually owns part of Drink Champs. Now, a oh, lot yeah. of people at the time, they didn't know that and they were ignoring it if they did know it, right? And you was yeah. like, I was asking you, was like, how do you know that? And you was like, Cause I know that I and, and like you didn't really give a lot of details, but I started to look into it. I felt I felt that I right. felt that hundred percent. And then I found it. I found it when I told you I heard it from Nori. Okay. Right. And then like I found the clips, and people were still denying that that Joe was a, a part owner of Drink Champs, right? Yeah, and, I think this is just got a, a, a online uh, uh, presence. Like they they hire a t- uh, like typists everywhere then they just do this shit because uh, <laughs> you know these comments because we give them comments a little bit too much uh praise and we forget more you know so as far as like the love there's a lot of love you know what I'm saying I, I always I mean, it's humanity i guess right. we get caught up with the negative shit you know saying you got you know certain niggas over here whatever but they you know that's what i guess votes everybody's vote but you know what i'm saying I, I like to find out who's behind a negative comment usually because it's like you know what I'm saying? They usually be like, you know what I'm saying? Like Scooby Doo, your master, is like your fucking sister or somebody. <laughs> you play fucking games with you and you be want to kill them and shit. But it's always those people. Like, be like, stop being a bitch, man. He's writing all this poison for what? You know what I'm saying? I know it's lies and all that, but it bothers me that other people might look at it and think that's true. That's the only thing that bothers me. But right. then through this ordeal, through our little journey, I found out that fuck them if they think it's true or not. You know what I'm saying? So that was just one great uh, lesson, which I should have learned already. But, you know, uh, definitely, is uh, I don't give a fuck what you think. You know what I'm saying? As far as, like, uh, I know the truth, and then the truth is the truth. And if you didn't feel it, it's because you are a fucking liar yourself. That's why your bone, your fucking truth bone is not there anymore because you're used to lies. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I think, um, you know, and that's that bothered me a lot, too. Bother me that the narrative for me being a like a liar, uh, me being a you know a, like a sneaky nigga, uh, me being a nigga that do niggas dirty, you know, saying without reasons, that bothered me. That you know, what I'm saying those are the things that you know, the different the narratives that was being painted like, about you, a whole different, the whole different yeah. opposite, a whole different opposite. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying like I told you stories, and all those stories that I told you a hundred, you know, what I'm saying thousand, matter of fact. So well, wait, wait. So let's go into that, right? So there was a lot of things that happened with Nori last year that kicked it off with Nori. He came back and he defended himself on Dream Champs and was like, "I got no beef with Cuban. I got no beef with J Hood. Blah blah blah." You know, no, no, I, mean? I got no beef like, with Cuban. I, yeah, beef. Yeah. I, I wish him the best. I wish him the best. He could never get a job here. He could never feed his kids. He could never, ever, ever do a song with nobody that we know, and we know everybody. Right. So he put the embargo. Remember, that's another right. metaphor that I, I know about the embargo. The Cuba, America got the embargo on Cuba. They cannot do business with none of their friends. No, that America's allies with. That's the real blackballing, right? Because it's like, it's not just, I'm going to tell you directly you can't, but you know, if you associate with anybody, then then you're going to get cut off. You just That's just an unspoken thing, thing right. basically. Well, yeah, but, but, but Nori put it out there. Yeah, so I appreciate the, you know, the alcoholic, you know what I'm saying, uh, for doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, uh, let's slow down, kid. A little bit, bit, bit. bit, 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 bit. You know, Didn't you, you remember the clip where he was, he put out on... But yet, on- yet, yet I wake up to the Henny, though. I wake up to the Henny, but he, Joe's <laughs> fucking main show is Drink Champs. He owns Drink Champs. But he, I wake up, he talks about alcoholics and all that I am. Oh, my God. 
But remember, like he put out that clip where he was drunk on uh, Instagram and he was saying, Fat Joe's my brother. If you yeah. don't fuck with Fat Joe, fuck you. He drunk, though. But basically all that, right? Yeah. So after all that has happened. No, you, you didn't catch the first one, though. He came in crying for pun. Remember? What? Well, he was crying for pun. He was telling a pun story. He was crying for pun. He was drunk. He was drunk again. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he was, doing, he was drunk again. But he was telling a, story, a pun story. You know, he was doing the drunk shit. But, uh, you know. It's good. It's good for camera. Like I tell him, like, like, Nori is definitely Pun's TV brother. Not TV brother. He means nephew, like nephew. Cousin? He's a cousin. Yeah, sister's, you know, side to the fucking neighbor of the house. He's like that kind of family member. You know what I'm saying? Which he comes in and he does the greatest act when he's drunk on it. You know what I'm saying? Because he drinks a lot. So he's very, very uh, charismatic with the drinking. Just like, you know what I'm saying? They thought, you know, that, they, they tried to throw that on me. Well, Joe did, you know, uh, intoxication, like, you know what I'm saying? Or oh, God did maybe when I was fucking doing the crazy shit, but, uh, uh, you know, I, like I said, man, I consider myself a, you know what I'm saying, a, a man's man. So, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just rock with what, you know, the, the, my experiences and my education and my struggle, Everything that I've, I've been through, you know what I'm saying? I, I apply it. And that's why I'm at with my life, you know what I'm saying? And I knew it as a kid. I knew it as a fucking teenager. I knew it. I knew who I was. And, and, but I never owned it. And uh, really seen it for what, you know, what it, what it worth, what it's really worth. And it's worth everything. You know what I'm saying? You being yourself. That's why, you know what I'm saying? I have no fucking, you say no shame. I mean, you ain't going to catch me doing no fucking lame shit. But you won't see no shame when I laugh my ass off, when I fucking say stories that are fucking left field, because I know they're true. It's right. just the way I'm saying them is is is, is very uh you know animated, you know what I'm saying, and, and charismatic. But you know uh, I'm glad to to and this this fucking show made me uh explore my fucking little comedy a little more too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. So, yeah. so I thank you for that. You know what I'm saying? It, this is the greatest therapy ever. No, you know because saying? you know, a lot of people were like, I didn't know Cuban was this funny. Like, Cuban is just hilarious. Right, right, right. Like, people were like saying right. that all over, right? And and I, I think know, that I it I made it, people... I got it in real life. Like, I got it in real life. Like, motherfuckers, yeah, I tell you this is that funny. Like, yeah, me and you do this shit all the time. Yeah, but people yeah. were like, they they learned to like you because of how funny you were. And then they, it made them open up to your story, though, because they were like, this is, he's such a likable guy. Like, I don't get it. Like, you know. Well, listen, <laughs> listen. If, if I couldn't convince y'all to like me because I'm the realest nigga in the world when it comes to, like, rapping for a fucking brother of mine, being a protector, you know what I'm saying, to the other baloney smoker, uh, you know what I'm saying, taking the hood, niggas from the hood, the fucking immigrants, and when he had his turn, taking them and trying to give them a deal, you know, with me to take a, a people from fucking oppression. If you didn't buy none of that from me, you know what I'm saying? If you didn't fucking even believe anything, or might be if you believe that, because I know I did it. So if I told you it's for a reason. If I didn't fucking fought against the fucking uh side by side with whatever we needed to be done for to protect the crew, if I didn't sell you with that kind of heart and who I am besides a, a fucking ill rapper, then let me catch you with my humor. 